Hey folks, last tutorial I showed you how to take SFM Lab models uh, from your favorite video games and bring them into Blender. So I showed you how to uh, export the models, import them into Blender, and export the textures and edit them in such a way that would let you import them into Blender. So here you see here we have Genji, uh, and I've already gone ahead and uh, I have a, uh, a, a, oops, sorry, I have a a rig for Genji here, and I can go ahead and move him around. I've got uh, IK, I've got foot roll, I've got IK in the arms, I've got targets for the elbow. Everything's all set up nice and pretty. So um, I'm able to, you know, manipulate. This is the same armature I used for the Diva and Widowmaker characters, pretty much. Of course, I added this bandana. If I go to options and turn on auto IK, I can go ahead and move the bandana very easily because these are bendy bones or B bones. And uh, so this is much nicer than the way it comes. So I'm gonna show you, let me just show you the way the model comes in when you first import it. All right, so we're gonna import the Genji model again. Choose the .qc file, import. It may take a few seconds. You may get an error or something. It may be looking for some uh, animations. Nothing to worry about. So let's just go ahead and select everything. Turn on the screencast keys again. And uh, I'll just scale it down so it's easy to work with here. Okay. All right. All right. So uh, when you bring it in, you've, you first come in, you, you do have an armature. If you go into, if you select uh, Genji here and go to the modifiers tab, there's an armature. If you go to the data tab, there's a bunch of weight uh, maps. If we were to select the armature right now and pose it, then you can see that, in fact, there are uh, weight maps that are working and everything's working the way it should. But of course, there's not much to this. There, in fact, there's no rigging whatsoever. So um, if you just want to render this for some Photoshop stuff, then you're pretty much done because all you gotta do is, is pose this with FK and you're done. But if you wanna animate it like I did the other stuff, you're gonna have to have some other stuff. You're gonna have to have some IK and some other uh, goodies uh, for rigging. I, I've done some rigging tutorials in the past. I'm not gonna show you how to rig per se in this tutorial. Uh, I've done those in the past. You can check out some of my older videos. I could do some more in the future if you want. But uh, um, So let's take a look at the armature as it exists here. We can select this. And if we go to the uh, skeleton tab, as you can see, B Blender does not have an armature mode that is these balls with these dotted lines between them. So if you uncheck shapes, you can see the actual bones as they would be displayed in Blender. And then we go to octahedral mode, for example, go ahead and edit it. You can see the actual bones themselves. All right, so you can see that this is the way the actual bones are. So we can grab them and stretch them around here. Since they've already been weight painted and stuff, it's not gonna really hurt. So um, I found that using these bones as it, one option you have is just to take these bones as is and rig them. So you could, for example, go in and uh, go back into pose mode and go turn on your shapes, for example. And then you could go ahead and add some, null, some empty objects or some other bones and start adding some bone constraints and rig them that way. Uh, the problem with that is, I found, is that, um, again, if we go to this and turn off shapes, if if you look at these bones the way they're laid out, they're not really laid out in a way conducive to animating in Blender, at least. So as you can see here, this, this knee bone, it's pointing backwards like this. Most of the time when you're, when, oops, sorry about that. Most of these, you would uh, you would want the, the leg bones to be like this. You don't want it to go all the way down. For one thing, this is the way it works when you're uh, setting it up for the automatic, um, uh, you know, weight painting and stuff. You know, you, you want the bone to go down the length of the area of the object that you want to associate with that bone. So um, this, I found, you can do that. That's one way of doing it. Uh, you can do a hybrid of, of that. You could go, go ahead and, for example, delete some of the bones that are problems and keep the others. For example, a lot of people like to do just, I you know, uh, standard, we can go into stick mode here. They use, use standard bones for the arms here, standard, I'm sorry, FK, just FK only for the torso and the arms. So if you want to do that, you can just leave this, for FK, these things are fine because everything's already set up. The one thing you want to do is 
probably just go ahead into edit mode and make these, because like I said, they're pointing in strange directions. And if you're in edit mode, you can go ahead and maneuver these into different places. Oops. Uh, one thing you want to do when you're working with this is turn on the X axis mirroring and the options so that you only have to work on one side. So if you move one bone, the bone on the other side of the object is moved as well. So you might want to go ahead and um, kind of drag these out into positions that are you know conducive to actually working with them. So again, what I found is if you want to see the, the way the bone is laid out, the octahedral display is probably the best way because it shows you there's kind of a, a, a fat end and a skinny end and it's also easy to see the roll. So if you, for example, see the bone roll, if, if the bone is laid out like this, if it's not kind of perpendicular to the area, uh, the, you know, the where you want to rotate the object from, when you try to rotate it along the normal axis, you're going to have some problems. So you want to, you know, switch to that mode, uh, octahedral display mode, and then just go ahead and drag these into positions that are just easy for you to, to um, go ahead and work with. You don't have to, you know, don't really move them around, just just move the uh, the tips of them so that you can easily grab them. So same thing for these finger bones. You're just doing this just so that you can easily uh, grab these. These bones are already, um, and you you do want to you know make sure, like I said before, you want to make sure that the it's um, Control R, and you want to make sure that the bone roll is, for example, for these fingers, you want to make sure that the bone roll, in this case, the blue axis is going down the length of the bone here. So, I'm sorry, down the length of the finger. So you want to make sure that all these bones have that roll, oops, in the, about the same way so that you can, you know, line them up correctly and stuff. So, if that makes sense. So as you can see here, when you select them, you'll see that that, that axis is lined up the same way. All right, that's one way of doing it. All right, I'll show you another way, which is the way I used for uh, all the, well, most of the stuff so far. Um, so here's the Genji the way it is now. Um, what I ended up doing here, number one, uh, this this rig here, this the Diva and Widowmaker rig, is has got quite a, a lot going on. There's, um, there's IK constraints, there's a stretch two and stuff. It's using bendy bones. Um, it's got targets and pull vectors and all that stuff. And, and so I didn't want to recreate this from scratch. Uh, that's another thing you could do. You could just go ahead and recreate, create an entirely new armature and bring it in here. Um, but what I did was just take an existing armature and associate it with the weight maps of this model. And it's not that difficult. So we go into uh, File Append, and I just drilled into, uh, here's the Diva uh, file, and I just drilled in, into the Objects folder and selected the Diva armature and appended it. And as you can see here, the Diva armature comes in side by side. If I go ahead and select that and show all the layers, uh, how I can associate this armature with this model is pretty simple. I just go in. Uh, first thing you do is you line it up so that the armature is scaled and positioned right in the middle of the model. So we're going to go ahead and select this armature and move it out for the time being just so we can see you know we're not getting distracted okay so um oops, sorry about that uh so then you go ahead you move this model into place or i'm sorry this armature you move it into place you scale it up so that it says close as it can be of course it won't be perfect so you go ahead into edit mode again you turn on your x-axis mirroring sorry the cat is here but no problem and then you go ahead and you fine tune it. You go grab some bones and you start moving them into place. If you've got the x-axis mirroring on, you only got to do it for the one side. You just go ahead and grab these guys, bring them over, uh, grab these, bring them over, okay? Grab the legs and everything, move them in place, all right? Uh, it's, it doesn't take that long, really. You just go ahead and tweak it here and there, and you'll find out with after you've done it a few times, within a matter of maybe a couple minutes, you will have the skeleton correctly in place there. So uh, if we go into the bones, as you can see here though, um, these bones are not labeled correctly already. So we'll go back to object mode and we'll look at Genji here. Um, 
So if we go and look at the uh, wheat maps, you'll see that they have these names. So all you got to do is you go into your armature here and find out what, okay, for example, now what I do is I keep the original armature in the file here so I can go ahead to have an opposed mode so I can find out, okay, this, for example, is named biped spine underscore two. This pelvis button uh, uh, bone here is called biped underscore pelvis. Uh, this bone here is called biped underscore hip underscore L. All right, so then I just go ahead and know, okay, well, this corresponds to this bone here. So then you simply have to go in and change the name of thigh.l to whatever. So I go ahead and select this, copy this, and then go back, find the corresponding bone, and just paste the name in. All right. You just go through and you paste the names in so that that way the um, you, you go through each bone, make sure that each bone that corresponds to a bone on this original armature is represented, all right? So for example, this armature does not have these pole vector targets or some of the other rigging stuff. Well, in that case, you just don't worry about it, you know, you're, you're not gonna need to rename them or anything. They don't have weight maps associated. If you do, for example, this armature here, this Diva armature does not have uh, stuff to deal with the uh, bandana. So what I just did was, you can go ahead and of course, feel free to go ahead and add. So I'm just going to duplicate this, drag it into place here, and subdivide the bone, put that into place, subdivide that bone. And again, because these are going to correspond to oops, uh, these bones here, you go ahead and uh, again, you, you find out you want these to mimic the bones from the original armature. So these are called biped underscore scarf one, biped underscore scarf two. So you go ahead and just rename those as well. So you, so that's it. Step one, you just, uh, you bring the armature in that you already have and you scale it and tweak it so that the, um, the bones of the, the armature want you want to use are in place uh, right in the middle of the, uh, of the object. Then the next step, again, is to rename each bone here of the armature you want to use to correspond to a bone from the original armature, all right? Uh, then the final thing you have to do is simply, since this already has the armature modifier in place, you just, instead of using the uh, armature that it came with, like this one here, this is the, the armature it came with originally, Instead of using that, you just point it to the new armature, for example. And as you can see here, it's just as long as you've named everything correctly, you don't have to do any weight painting at all. So that is by far one of the best and easiest ways. Now you may have something in your armature that you want to use. For example, you may have more spine bones here than uh, you did in the original armature. In that case, just go ahead and, since you're only doing it for a few bones, go ahead and just create uh, go here and just create a new um, weight group, vertex group, and we'll call it uh, new bone, for example. And then go ahead and just manually select or weight paint those vertices the way I've shown you in previous tutorials. Here's one that I did, uh, here's Reinhardt. Okay, so in, in Reinhardt's case, what I decided to do here was, um, I went and did a hybrid approach that I showed you before. I went ahead and, um, the uh, trying to, to rig the legs and everything was kind of a hassle, but in, in his case, I, I'm, I'm pretty much going to use, I'm, I'm pretty happy with using uh, FK for the arms and everything, the arms and the torso. I mean, he's not that mobile or bendy of a character. There's not a lot of crazy stuff going on with his spine. So the, really the only thing I had to set up was, was uh, the um, IK on the legs. So all I did for this character was I left these bones in place from the original armature. I used the original armature. Uh, what I did was I deleted the leg bones, bones completely. And uh, again, I stretched out these bones in edit mode to uh, to just, you know, like I showed you originally, I, I just dragged out the tips of these bones into place so that they were easy to select. Uh, for the legs, I just went ahead and drew some new bones and uh, I went ahead and, and just rigged a very simple IK system in, into this place for this guy. So pose mode, 
and as you can see here, so Reinhardt is, uh, and then again, uh, for the new bones, I went ahead and as you can see here, they have names that I don't normally give to uh, skeletons. Biped underscore hip dash L, uh, biped underscore knee dot L. I usually call this bone calf and this bone thigh, or I'm sorry, this bone calf and this bone thigh. But um, in this case, I just renamed them or named them that, and uh, they were already associated. As long as the names match the vertex groups that are created for the original armature, then uh, you don't have to do any weight painting yourself. All right, so that's what I call the hybrid approach. Uh, so um, let's recap. Uh, when you bring in the uh, skeleton, which I think is right here, as you can see here, uh, you select it, you go to armature mode, turn off shapes, turn on octahedral, go ahead and start you know, investigating it. If you do want to use the original um, armature uh, using the hybrid mode that we use for Reinhardt here, what you got to do is you got to go in and edit that sucker so that you just grab the tips of these bones here and just stretch them out so that they're easy to select. Make sure that the um, the bones, for example, in the fingers are pointing in the right directions. All right, and uh, then go ahead and, and add some new bones as needed. Uh, for example, in this Reinhardt, I just I just create some new bones for the legs. Make sure that they're named to represent the um, proper vertex groups here. And you're pretty much done. That's the hybrid approach. The other approach was the one I used for Genji, which is that I actually in, uh, I actually appended a uh, armature from another character, brought that one in, and then scaled it moved it into place, uh, edited the bones, tweaked them so that they matched this uh, character, and uh, renamed all the bones individually to match the vertex groups. All right, you just go ahead and rename them here. And uh, then I just simply select the model, go to the modifiers tab, and then point the um, uh, armature modifier to the new armature. So that's all you got to do. So um, anyway, from there, you can pretty much rig anything you want with minimal effort without having to do a ton of weight painting. So uh, kind of a long-winded uh, explanation, but rigging it cannot be done very, very simply. There's just a lot of stuff to do. So I hope that with these last two tutorials, you have no excuse now to, but to do your own fan films uh, of your favorite game characters. So I look forward to seeing those. Let me know what you come up with. Uh, bye.